and welcome to the Idea Space Podcast, a place for women who want to create the life they've been dreaming of. This is where women come to learn how to get their ideas out of their head and into the world. Whether you've wanted to create a better relationship, job, business, hobby, or a better self, I bet there's something more that you want, and it's time you were able to get it without feeling overwhelmed, alone, or confused. I'm your host, Jen Liddy, a high school teacher turned entrepreneur. It's my mission to help women bring their ideas to life and get what they want without feeling guilty, selfish, or confused. If you're tired of your dream living inside your brain and are ready to have what you want, you're in the right place. And I promise you can have it and you can stay sane while doing it. Let's go. Hi, welcome to the Idea Space Podcast. I'm your host, Jen Liddy, and I'm wrapping up my month talking about doubt by interviewing two designers, Tori Thomas and Laura Deliet, are two women who work in completely separate cities, had jobs, but knew they wanted to be entrepreneurs and really wanted a partnership. So they created Circa Design, their branders and their graphic designers. And what I love about their story is if you listen to them, they show you and they tell you how they overcame doubt. It's not that they were not afraid. It's not that they lacked terror in making this big leap that they made. It's that they learned how to overcome the doubt. And I think that their story can really be helpful. And I wonder what you can take away from it so that you can help yourself overcome the doubt. Enjoy their interview. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining me today. If you've been following along, you know that I've been interviewing entrepreneurial men and women who have made a huge leap where they've taken their interest and their expertise and they've done something really scary and I'm bringing them to you because I want you to know that that idea that's been following you around for years, the one you keep pushing down, you can make it real. And today I have two designers who are co-founders and co-creative directors of a design firm. They actually live in completely separate cities, Laura Deliot and Tori Thomas of Circa Design and they are giving us their time today. So thank you ladies. Welcome, and I'm so glad to have you here. Thank you, Jen. Thank you so much for having us. We're so excited about being part of your podcast, and it's been fun following following your message through through the podcast that you've had with other other entrepreneurs. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Jen. We love what you're doing um, because it's really similar to what our mission is. As um, graphic designers and branders, we started Circa really to help small businesses grow their brand. Like we could see the impact of like like an effective brand and well-designed assets with like a purpose and a vision and how that can help entrepreneurs at like any stage. So we work with businesses of any size, but we really love working with those businesses that where it's someone who's taken an idea and then helped it grow, whether they, they're a team of one or a team of 20, whatever it is, we really love working with those people. Did yes, you guys but- have jobs before that, like, you know, where you got a paycheck and it was a pretty, pretty typical job situation before you became entrepreneurs? Yes. Well, um, I, I've, over my career, I've had a couple different jobs, worked at, worked in-house at a publishing firm, worked for a graphic design studio. And then prior to Circa, prior, prior to starting Circa, I was a freelancer, so working mm-hmm. for myself, which had had its um, ups and downs. And then, Tori, you want to go? Oh, yeah. So I actually, I guess like where it all started, I think one of the things you talk about, Jen, is like, the dream and like what is like behind the dream. And I think this is like a great way to start. So I moved to Nashville and I started working kind of freelance with Laura as a graphic designer while I was looking I was it was in 2008. So it was like the, um, bottom of the recession or like 2009. So I was kind of jumping around to a lot of different jobs and during that period, I could observe Laura, who was this like incredibly successful freelancer. She has like a great portfolio. She worked with Chronicle Books as a design director and in New York at this like awesome agency, just like an incredible portfolio. And I could see her balancing like work as an entrepreneur, 
doing excellent work, but also being there for her family, which I think, you know, is like interesting because right now, I don't know if you can hear Boone, but uh, my six week old baby is like bouncing at my knees. <laughs> so if I jump out of the screen, that's what's going on. Um, and so to tie it all together, I could see that and that's where I wanted to be. Like I could see her not sacrificing her work, not sacrificing family, but like finding what we're kind of like calling life balance mm -hmm. where it's really both help each other. And so before we got to that point, I did have other jobs that did pay me full time was a salary. We had been in conversation for, I mean, honestly, probably we talked about it for about like three years. Wow. Um, yeah. And I, at the time when I had a full time job, I was doing freelance on the side and I was timing everything to make sure that I knew when it was worth stepping away and doing. Uh, at the time, we kind of thought that it was going to be partnership, but more freelance style. Like, I, I think it's grown into something else, which mm -hmm. is great, but I wanted to make sure that it made sense and it wasn't going to be like a stressful break. And so it, it was pretty organic, but I mean, a lot of intention behind it too. So you both knew that you wanted to have the autonomy and the control, right? You, you wanted to yeah. be able to create the dream the way you wanted to create it. And you were terrified at the same time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we, um, um, I, I, as a, having my own freelance business, I've really had, you know, I had the isolation, which I know is a theme that you talk about a lot, um, of working by myself and felt like I just wasn't pushing myself. I also didn't have the support that I needed. And so when I started freelancing with Tori, it just opened up this whole new world. And even though I was really scared of that risk of starting a business, I, you know, from having that experience working with Tori, I knew I really respected her style of she, she understood business in a way that I hadn't really brought into my mm -hmm. freelance business. She also had you know, amazingly talented designer, or she was an amazingly talented, or is amazingly talented designer. But um, so so she kind of helped me make that leap of taking taking a, a small business, freelance business that I'd started to to the next level. So you guys knew that working together would, what I'm hearing you say is it would make you more creative. It would make you feel more supported. And you knew that you both had strengths that would balance the other one. Yes. Yeah. And I think, I think it's surprising, but I think the risk, despite the risk, I felt so much more secure in having a partner to balance all out those fears and anxieties about, taking on bigger clients or yes. taking on more financial risk or taking on overhead. It's terrifying. I mean, I think this is why most of my clients don't go anywhere with their ideas because they don't feel that support. And it's very scary to make the, the leap from job slash paycheck to I have to create everything myself. It's, it's terrifying. So I'm wondering for both of you, even though you had each other, were there any, um, like negative thoughts or troublesome thoughts that kept you stuck, especially in the beginning? Definitely. Um, I think one for me specifically, I, I, it was really challenging in the beginning being a fresh business and just feeling like so I, I maybe like vulnerable and kind of exposed and, and a little bit like a poser. Like I felt like we weren't, I, I struggled to even like tell friends what I was doing. Like so many of my friends didn't even know I had left my job and was starting a business because I also would tell people, oh, well, we're just a small design. It's tamping you know, like, it down. It's just, yes. it's, don't uh, have expectations of deal. us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, I think it's when I see people we work with do that, I, it, so I, I'm like, don't do that. It, you are, you're doing it. You're, you are doing it. Other people that you think are doing it better are were either were where you were you are now, or they might be doing the exact same thing. Like it's that kind of comparison syndrome. Compare and despair, yeah. Compare um, and despair. Compare and despair, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. What you're saying is you are really excited to be able to be a source of support for those people who are coming up now. Like you, you're actually a role model now for those women. It it is. I mean, and what we do as like 
branders and graphic designers, we're really like helping businesses with their presentation. Like we call it, it's the visual brand identity. So it's like not who they are, it's like how they're presented. Now this is so and, important and I'm excited to talk about this because one of the things I think that when people get started in their businesses, they don't think, but I, I can say for myself, I didn't think about it at all. I was, yeah. I was afraid of my imposter syndrome, like you were guys yeah. were talking about. And I was afraid of like, how are other people doing it better? Do I even belong here? But then I had to think about, oh my God, my specialty is coaching, not cultivating brand identity and voice. Mm. So you guys made a big leap and you were terrified and you had all these negative thoughts. But I'm really interested to know why this was so important to you. Like, why is getting branding, for, especially for women who are up and coming, so important to you guys? I think we saw the passion that entrepreneurs brought to the table. And I, I think just really wanted to share our own journey. I mean, I'm trying to think of other, other. Yeah. Lori, what, I, do you have any thoughts? I think like we're both really passionate about like what we've created. So what we've kind of mentioned that, you know, to us, our studio allows us this kind of like life balance allows for like a lot of flexibility. And I think business, owning your own business and being at like effective there provides, can provide so much freedom. Yeah. And I think our favorite clients tend to be the ones who really like concentrate on their business. Like they want their time and effort in their business. And then we get to come in and help them with their presentation. I think a lot of time, or I think it's tempting, especially like now with Instagram and so many things are so visual. Mm -hmm. It's tempting for people to concentrate on the presentation side of their business rather than like the core of what they're doing, like what service they're providing. Right, right. And so, and it, which is kind of like ironic that I would even say that because that's like what we do <laughs> as a presentation. Do. Yeah. Right. But it's really, it's way more fun to work with someone who that's where their passion is, is like their business. Yeah. And then we get to like step alongside them and help them with that presentation. But we're not, we're not like driving them to be something they're not. We're just working on presenting them better. And like an authentic think, brand voice kind of thing. Yes. Yes. And I think something that is, sometimes like a misconception behind that like authentic brand brand is it doesn't have to be where you are right now. It could be where you're going, mm -hmm. you know, like that's still being authentic. It's like, and I think like that was something like Laura and I struggled with is like, you don't want to say you're something that you're not, but a lot of times it's a, a little bit of a journey getting there. So like, don't sell yourself short. Like it's a great advice. That is yeah. Great. What mistakes were you ladies seeing women entrepreneurs make in the early stages that you were so excited to swoop in and help them overcome branding wise? I think to speak to what Tori was saying earlier, that having a real core, I, core message mm -hmm. is important and it create, makes the visual identity that much better. And we realized that early on that it wasn't just about making something pretty mm -hmm. when we, as in design and in presentation. And we have expanded our services to include some content development and writers. We have write, th four different writers now between freelancers and contractors and employees that help us with that really, really dig in with a client and help them uh, help us understand who they are and help them get their message across so that we can then turn that into a visual presentation that has, that has some authenticity. Mm -hmm. And really speaks to like that, like there's not a one size fits all kind of branding uh, formula for people. No, we found that we try to be very custom to each client and really understand what their needs are and like what Tori was saying earlier, where they're going so that so that we can create something that that takes them along that path instead of holds them in or keeps them stuck in one place. What I want to point out here is as somebody who is not visual, I felt for a long time that this part of my business would, was really just going to suck because I wasn't good at this, right? And I also didn't have the money and resources, nor did I have the vision to hire somebody. I'm sure that you guys encounter this all the time with entrepreneurs who are very early on, but maybe they realize that this is not their zone of genius and also they, they want to create an authentic core messaging and authentic brand. How do you work with those types of people or what advice could you give to that 
person in, in that stage of business? We, we actually, we do, we run into that a lot, like um, clients that don't have that budget. And one of the things Tori has been really passionate about is building, building tools that we can then share with clients so that they, they can work through the effective channels before they, while they're, while they're building their revenue so they could come back and hire us. So in, in Kalamazoo, we're doing a branding workshop this weekend or Tori and two of our designers in Kalamazoo. Tori, do you want to talk a little bit about that? Yes. Yeah. That's a great point. And it was actually, as we've grown, that's something like, I think Laura and I both like felt so passionate about is like, we love working with those people directly that, I mean, it just makes a big difference. Like, like you were mentioning, it's like, that's, you're working on your business. Visuals aren't your strong suit. So a, us coming in and working alongside you makes a big difference. It like helps, you know, or not you specifically, but anyone. So we really love that. As we've grown, we've realized that like we've taken on more overhead. We have a bigger team. So like we can't do those tiny things that we were able to do before for like individuals. But what we're trying to do is grow it into like these workshops where we can meet together. So we have 10 people coming this Saturday. I'm really excited about it because it's going to be like very hands-on and we're basically going through what we do in that first phase where we'll look at, we do a brand study and then we go through this brand guide and we take a look at your like mission, vision, principles, your, so like where you're going, and then we'll talk through your brand personality, help someone as they like think about their color palette, fonts, even logo, because I think it's like you want to get that foundation there first and anyone can work on that and you can work at that at any time. And it doesn't have to be like another thing. You don't have to have this like perfect mission statement or this perfect tagline or a perfect elevator pitch. Like just keep working on it. Like start yeah, somewhere and then yeah, keep iterating. Like we're still doing that with ours. Like yes. we we say we help good ideas grow and then we're still like, okay, well, graphic design. Some people know what graphic design is. We don't really want to say all we do are logos and websites because that's not all we do. But people understand, like, you almost have to say that because otherwise they're like, well, you're those people who just, like, talk about things, you know, right. you don't you're actually. You're the logo like, woman. That's, yeah. you don't want to be known as that. Yeah. 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 I love this conversation because it keeps a lot of my clients from growing or even starting really is the fear that they are supposed to know everything up front. Like I'm like, and you're saying you you might not, you might change your logo. You might change your tagline. You might change your colors. And that is part of the growth of a business. Yeah. It's part of the process. Like that's actually a big thing, you know, having that like imposter syndrome and feeling like I was, we were not where we should be and looking around and be like, Oh, if only we looked better, if only we could say it better, if we only, you know, in being graphic designers, I mean, we didn't have a website for like, we were building people's websites and I think it took us almost a year to make our own website, (laughs) which is embarrassing, honestly. But it is, I think one person um, in a business group w- would always say respect the process. Mm-hmm. And I love that because I think it's so, it doesn't, you know, a lot of times the process, it is, it's all over the place. You can't quite like just do a step-by-step regimen, but you have to respect where you're at. And there's nothing wrong with being in the idea phase or in the startup phase or in the growth phase or, you know, kind of going back to square mm-hmm. one. And Tori, you had a great analogy we were talking about the other day, the middle school analogy that really kind of visualized it for me and, and kind of put it into perspective. Yeah. So the thought there is it's like your business goes through like a ugly middle school phase. It's like where you wore like blue eyeliner and had a gap in between your front teeth and it's like the pictures that you never want to look at again and when you see them it's like if it's too soon it's honestly like it it like kills a little part of you but like within with some distance you can start to look back at those and be like oh I remember being there and that's cute I was cute that's how I got then. Here. It's just yeah, so cute. yeah. even Marie Forleo the- talks about that part of her business where she looks back on her very early stages and she's like cr- it's like cringe worthy, right? I actually remember that as a teacher. I think back to my very first three years as a high school teacher and what I, what I assigned those kids and how bad I was. It's like, that's just where I was in the whole 
scope of things. So we have yeah. to kind of be kind to ourselves in our branding and our design, but also in the growth of our business. Like we have to be nice to ourselves about this is just where I am right now. Yeah. And as for feedback, like I think a big part of our process is this, like we actually added it, I think, I think two years ago, but it took us a while to figure out that it was a part of our process that we needed it. And it's called evaluate. And it's just, our goal is at the end of every project, we take time to ask for feedback, talk to the team, talk about what went well and talk about what didn't go well, which always is tough, oh. but it's, kind of where you learn the most. Totally. How did you build up that callus to be able to ask that question? Because that's really scary, that question. It, it is. It's honestly, I think the the side effect of like not asking it is so much worse. Like <laughs> it'll keep happening. <laughs> that's such a great point. Like um, just instead of walking around in the dark, you're like, this might be uncomfortable, but I'm going to learn some stuff that will make me better. And I think um, in terms of like client services, like who doesn't, if something goes wrong, providing the opportunity for someone to tell you about it and, and just being able to say, you know, I recognize that it wasn't great. Like how can we do better? Mm -hmm. And a lot of times your customers and clients, I mean, they want to help you like, and, and they honestly just might not say anything because it's, it's not a fun conversation and it's not fun for them as it's not fun for you, but like giving them the opportunity to give you that feedback helps you grow. I bet uh, it also creates, creates so much returning com customers, right? Absolutely. Oh. Yeah. I think it, it creates mm -hmm. so much respect between the collaboration, but then it is, it opens up opportunity for more, more, more work because they understand that we are invested in them. So what I keep hearing you guys say is that when you were building your business, you knew what you were focused on, you knew why it was important, but you also kind of bumped into each other and yourselves along the way, like, oh, I've got to get feedback now, and oh, we've got to make this better. Like, you, it doesn't seem like you guys were scared. Were you not scared of the uncomfortable parts, or did you just learn how to live within the discomfort and see how much better it made you? I, we are, I think we are definitely scared. I um, you know there's, it's a big risk taking, taking on employees and payroll and overhead and, you know, a lot, all these things that I'd never thought about before. And I was, I was terrified, but I think having Tori as a partner to balance that just gave me so much more perspective and accountability. I knew she was counting on me. So it made me work harder and made me want to show up in a, in a, in a bigger way. So I think there's so much so much value to that partnership and sharing. I hear a lot of people on these interviews tell me that having a tribe is really vital. You guys have each other as partners. Um, a lot of people will say that having like a mastermind or having a, a, even a coach to bounce these ideas off of is part of the tribe. Besides the two of you so that you're not working in a silo, who's part of your tribe? It's a good question. Yes. I, I think I will speak to that because actually to the coaching, um, we do have a coach that helped us walk through kind of like partnership changes. And I mean, just being in a partnership, like learning how to communicate, how to talk about like some of those tough things and um, has been so valuable. And that actually, I think one of our biggest challenges was, well, I mean, we've had lots of challenges. And one of the things that I think has been, was a big challenge, but has had a lot of reward was my move to Kalamazoo, which prompted the, an opening of a new studio. But more than that, it made Laura and I really like hash out a lot of stuff because it was a really big risk on Laura's part, especially because yeah. she was trusting like a whole new market, me just having a baby, you know, th there are lots of factors that that was tough. And yeah. And I mean, it could have been, it could have gone so many different ways. And I think that we, us having someone to talk it through and not just, Each not other. just, yeah, yeah. And not just assuming that it's all going to work out. It'll be fine. Like you right. have to talk about those things. And I think you have to talk about like your fears. You, have, you know, it's the stuff, Jen, like, you know that. And I think it's near impossible to do it without someone else. Yeah. Like, it's like, it's just so echoey, right? In your own silo, yeah. it's just so noisy and echoey. I'm sorry, Laura, I totally yeah. interrupted oh. you. 
No, that's okay. I was going to say, we brought Jane in. It was right when we knew Tori was going to be moving because we really started the business not thinking we, we, we always thought we'd be together and we'd be sharing that role as creative director. So when she knew that this upcoming move was going to happen, we brought this consultant in and she, and it was really powerful because it helped us really think ahead and think about where we were right now and how we wanted it to look like. So originally when Tori first moved to Michigan, she, she was going to basically work remotely for Circa. And then she was able to see this opportunity in, in Kalamazoo to start a new studio. So it went from, we kind of baby stepped into the, the risk, even though it was a big risk from the beginning. And I think that it has been a kind of a theme throughout Circa is we have we have baby stepped, or at least in our mind, I think if somebody looked at it from the outside, it wouldn't feel, it wouldn't look like that. But we felt like we were taking these steps along the way that allowed us to, you know, take on more risk and, and take on more fear. What um, I keep hearing manage. you guys say is intentionality, yeah. right? Communication and baby stepping. Everything that I hear you saying, like that's, that's how you approach your design clients, right? Intentionality, Definitely. communication and baby stepping. Because not everybody's ready for like a huge brand overhaul, right? Yes. Right. I mean, but it's also how you run your business and it's also how you run your relationships. Yeah. <laughs> so that's, that's probably what has made you two so successful and able to grow and scale so quickly together. It's really impressive. It's, it's interesting to hear it from another, another perspective because it's true. It's, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what is one thing that each of you wishes you had known back in the beginning that you, you would have told yourself that you want other women to know? One of the things I wish I had known more of was just some of the business foundational, you know, the things that you need to do, um, the financial aspects, the, you know, everything from, from writing a business plan to setting setting budgets, we mitigated that a little bit. And Tori actually had taken taken a class before we started the partnership, so she had a good foundation. And then we mitigated that by enrolling in a two year program through the Entrepreneur Center here in Nashville, where we we felt like it was like getting your um, getting a master's for an entrepreneur I mean we did not get a master's but it felt it felt like a a business degree and the the resources that we had through that program and the the mentoring we had through that program was really amazing but I do wish I'd had a little bit more of that before we jumped right in would um would you have done it differently like would you have put off if you had the chance to put it off or do it the way you did it what would you choose I think you know as I'm as I'm thinking about that as you you asked that question I actually think it pro- I probably would have had more fear the more knowledge I had. Yes. So I'm glad we did it the way we did it. Yes, I love that. That's so true because a lot of my clients will be like, but I don't know how to write a business plan and I don't know how to do accounting. I'm like, those are all things we can learn or hire out. You know, those, right, we, we don't right. keep that from stopping us. I don't know we how use, to do a website. Who that's why we hire people. Like that's why right. there are experts for that, right? And we use a lot of free resources and templates, you know, online for, for things like contracts and even our partnership agreement was originally a template that we found online until we felt like we could afford, or we had the revenue so we could afford to hire a lawyer to help us with that. Yes. And that's, a, that's such a great point, Laura, because there's so much free information out there. Mm. And you guys actually talked about it before for your own business. Like you guys help people in advance of them paying you. You give them also a lot of information. And so we can take ourselves pretty far, but then we need our tribe to step in and work with us. And that's, that's the moment that you're like, you hire a design team or you hire the lawyer, like take yourself as far as you can go. And remember, you don't have to know everything. That's, that's such a great lesson. Tori, what back would you to say? The, oh, sorry, I, go ahead. No, sorry, back to that tri- the tribe question. Mm-hmm. I think Tori and I both had a really strong support system through our family. You know, mm-hmm. um, both of our husbands are very entrepreneurial minded and supported us strongly through the first couple of years. So I think that's a big part of our tribe. And Tori, you may, do you want to, do you have any other thoughts on the oh, tribe? And I'm mean, sure. Yeah. And struggles. Like I, well, I feel like a big, a big lesson, which has been like very clear um, since being in Kalamazoo and not having like Laura in the studio day to day um, is management. I mean, not having, I think my experience managing people before really like Kalamazoo's studio 
at our studio in Nashville, I had Laura and I had her in kind of a way that like, I didn't even realize how beneficial that was because of her experience of right. working with teams, like helping mentor young designers. It was like, I got to do my work and work alongside her designers. And, and I think, and I also had a lot more time. So it's like, I didn't have to be as intentional with my time with them giving feedback. Like I could, they could do something. I could take it, work on it, you know, send it off to the client. And being in Kalamazoo, I've learned that it's like, it's, it's tough. I mean, it's tough learning how to communicate and give people like constructive feedback and not just take it and do it myself, mm -hmm. but like really invest in that communicating back to them. Um, so I, and I would just say, I, I think that was just very eye opening to me of how, how much I need to grow there and how dependent I was on Laura without even realizing it. I mean, and even like I still am like our, our studios work very close together. Like we use a lot of technology that helps us communicate day to day. So she is still very active in this studio, but um, it we're was constantly discussing issues and having each other to bounce, bounce right. problems or, or challenges off of each other. But I'm hearing that um, you guys are so aware, like you're so self, aware and like hyper aware of the growth needs and the communication needs like the, the awareness is probably what keeps you guys tethered to each other because you need each other so much definitely I, I think the awareness is huge one of the things we love to say is one plus one is more than two <laughs> so true in, in the case of this partnership brings so much more to the table yeah. And it's what we hope for our clients too. Like it shouldn't be, it should be relationships that really we both walk out better. Mm -hmm. Like we have better work because we have better clients and our clients are better represented. You know, it's, it's really like, that's, that's the goal. Like that's we want great. to work with people we love working with and we yeah. hope they love working with us. And they benefit from all of your growth and your personal growth and your professional growth and your creative growth. Like your clients benefit from you guys being so self-aware and so communicative and so iterative in the work that you do and intentional in the work that you do. So it sounds like you're really focused on how can I be better so that my work can be better so that my clients' businesses can be better. We're very honest and transparent with our employees and our clients about that. And I think that then gives us you know, our, our employees have been so patient with us through the growth of the business because they know they, we, we share so much with them about the challenges of the transparency. Yes. Transparency. Yeah. yeah. So Tori, to go back to you, what is one thing you wish you had known before you got all of this started? What would you tell Tori from several years ago? Um, honestly, oh gosh, that, you know, the, the team management is a big piece in the last few years. And I, I think that the, the only way you really learn that is just by doing it. Like, I don't know if there's any books you can read. Um, I did, I think I had known that I wanted to own my own business pretty early on, like watching Laura. I knew that was like somewhere I wanted to be. So I, was very intentional in getting those resources, taking whatever classes I could, reading whatever books I could to help kind of prepare for that. And I think, yeah, I think honestly it goes back to like the team management. I think in my mind that was the one spot that I just kind of assumed it just kind of happens naturally. You know, I didn't realize the amount of the amount of learning that it takes to know how to build a team. Give and you kind of have to go through it with like baptism by fire. Like you, oh, you learn yes. it by doing it. You learn it by doing it. Yes. And I mean, and it's tough because like the person who suffers there, I mean, it's like you, but then also whoever you're managing really takes the brunt of that. So we've been very fortunate to have a team that's like very understanding and is like same mindset there to learn and to grow and to give grace when needed. So I've Sounds had a like lot you of guys grace. have really cultivated an interactive team that is supportive and communicative, but it sounds like you guys are all on the same page. Mm -hmm. We, really you know, our team. Yeah. yeah, we really like one of the pieces we talked about, like owning your own business. It does 
give you so much opportunity, so much freedom. And I think that opportunity is something that Laura and I really hope we provide for our team. Like we do the work to build this platform and then we want anyone who's working with us to really be able to take advantage of like the opportunity that yes. we think is like so exciting. Like to benefit from what you've learned. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I feel like you guys are such great role models for women who want to get into the entrepreneurial space and creative women who actually make shit happen and collaborate. Uh, there's no competition here. Like you guys are such wonderful models and also your work. You're so passionate about your branding work and you really understand the vital importance of branding, especially for a woman coming up in her business. Do you work with people outside of Nashville and Kalamazoo? Can you work uh, remotely? Absolutely. We have clients all across the country. That's fantastic. I figured as much, but I wanted to make sure. So how, yeah. how can people work with you or learn more about you or learn from you? What's the best way for people to get in touch with you? Well, okay. our, our website's a great, great place to see current work and we're, we're constantly updating it with new case studies and new work. And our Instagram feed is, is um, our main main source. For, Where yes. are you guys on Instagram? What's your handle? Circa.design. Um, your, your website is so pretty. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> and it's really navigable. I'm not surprised, obviously, you're designing. So I figured that it was like going to be beautiful, but it was also navigable. And I don't know if that's a word, navigatable. Yeah. And it was also um, like clear. The path to working with you is clear on the, on the website. Thank you. I love hearing that. Yeah. yeah. It's you so know, important sometimes to hear. Designers love the design so much that, that it almost gets in their way. But this was very like, oh, sure. this is what they do. And this is how we work together. Great. Yes. And we really encourage anyone to reach out. Like we are always up for a conversation. And if we're not the right fit, I mean, we love to help people find that right fit. So it's like, we do not feel bad if like you choose a different direction and we're always like willing to give feedback of like what we think. So we've had lots of people reach out to us about work, ended up with maybe going for like a cheaper option or an mm -hmm. independent freelancer and then reach out again to get feedback on what was produced. Well, you're, you're like establishing help. good relationships, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And we love doing that because like we know it's tough and, and we also know that sometimes a better choice when someone's starting is like an individual freelancer or just kind of doing it themselves until they're at that point right, where they're, they're ready. Like yeah. We have a great tool on our website called the brand audit, which is mm. kind of an introduction to how we think about, moving forward in a branding process. And it's a free tool that you can go fill out a, a short questionnaire and get some. What's the website? So that's a great tool. What is the website? It's okay. in our blog. Okay. I know we should have the I URL. Should. It's under Circa Notes. And so, it's so called people the, can go to your website and then, and then hit Circa Notes or mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. so what Circa is the notes. website again? Oh, Circa.design. Circa.design.com. No.com. No .com. <laughs> it's like our email address, which confuses some people, but it's just dot .design. So people can go to www.circa.design and get to your website? Uh -huh. That's amazing. Wow. Isn't that, isn't Fancy. That <laughs> um, is there any last piece of advice you guys would give to a creative woman who wants to make the leap and, and do what you guys are doing? Oh, gosh. Um, I think just staying true to who you are is really important, like knowing what you're good at and why mm -hmm. you're doing it. Um, and that's something that Tori and I, I think we innately knew that, but really, really verbalizing that through our business plan and through our goals was something that we worked hard on and was a con continuous conversation mm -hmm. as in starting the business. Thank you. How about you, Tori? Anything from... I would say, yeah, trust trust yourself and know kind of where you want to be and don't be embarrassed by it. I think that's another thing that we see a lot of, I mean, I know I, I was that same person. I didn't really want to have too lofty of a goal. It was like when we laugh because I think our first like business plan, our 10 year goal was to exist. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, because we were like, Oh, I don't know. And you don't have to know. Yeah. But it's like, why, couldn't we just say, we want to be the very best branding studio there is. And like, there's nothing wrong with that. And why that's 
that's what we want to be. So, but I feel like something about that seemed to me like prideful uh, or ignorant or, so, you know, it was naive. like, who am I? Yeah. Yes, uh-huh. yes. To think I could do that. And, and when you're in the very first stages and you're writing your first business plan, it's so hard to put anything down because it all seems so impossible at that moment. Yes. Like, who yes. am I to do any of this nonsense? Right. We were yeah. so conscious of creating some attainable goals so mm-hmm. that we felt like we'd accomplished something. <laughs> yeah, consciousness is definitely what I get from you too. So I really appreciate your time because I think it's so helpful to hear women who have done it and are successful and done it with intention in a way that like you, you're both standing in your integrity. You're obviously having, an, you love what you're doing, like you're having a good time. So thank you for sharing this with us today. I really, my audience, I think will really appreciate and be inspired by you guys. And I hope that they go check out your website so they can be inspired visually and learn more about how branding can help them bring along their own businesses. Well, well thank, thank you, you so Jen. much. Thank yes, you guys. This is great. Really appreciate it. Appreciate you guys. So I love this interview because these ladies are so intentional about building what they want. And it's not that they're not afraid. They're afraid and they do it anyway. And they have each other to bounce ideas off of and to hold space for each other. So if you are someone who is really ready to take the leap and start the thing and you're living in doubt, this is the time for you to take action reach out. I'd love to chat with you about what you want and how to get there. Thanks for joining me today. If you like what you heard, please subscribe to the Idea Space in your podcast app or tell that friend of yours who'd really love to bring her idea to life about it. If you'd be so kind to leave a review, then together we can help more women with the desire to create the life she wants find this podcast. Isn't it time we got our ideas out of our head and into the world? Remember, you can grab my free resource, Bring Your Idea to Life in Three Easy Steps, even if you don't have the time, by visiting me over at jenliddy.com forward slash time. I'll see you next time. And remember, all you need to do is take the very next step you know how to. Bye. Bye.